And that was the chorus vocal, but I had it as like a guitar part, and that's just been on my phone. I thought, oh man, it's great. Actually, thinking of us one day. I had it before Canyons, but um, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Yeah. The fan is now off. Yeah. Um, I had it before Canyons, but it never. You know, I didn't know that. That's ideas, ideas make their so way. So it's been, them. it's been, it's been marinating. Did you have the the lyrical phrase? Which it was just that guitar part. No, didn't didn't have anything. And was the melody th there? Yeah, the melody was there in the chords. In the chords. I yeah. knew it was like. So you knew it was going to be the same thing. I knew it was like that midnight in Richmond, uh, big muscular, moving, broad strokes kind of thing. Uh, I knew it was going to be like that. But. I find it interesting personally that that it started off on guitar. Yeah, because it's such a it's such a like Rhodes keyboard kind of thing to me. That's what it was. It was that guitar phrase. It didn't have a verse for it. Didn't have any context for it. And it was actually after we started talking about stuff. Um, yeah, I remember. I remember we were working on the album. I mentioned to you Leon Silver's the third, you know, productions, the '80s productions for Solar Record. That sort of boogie, mm -hmm. funk, R and B thing that he was doing at the time, like Whispers. Uh, mm -hmm. The beat goes on and, and Shalimar so second time around. We could get a bit of that. That would be a good direction to move it, move our sound in, into that kind of uh, skeletal framework and mm. do something. And that, that literally was like a five minute conversation or something. But in terms of where it went next, I mean, that was one of those songs where the song was written and the kind of the bones of it all happened at the same time. So Often did you write it in thing. five minutes then? It was, it was very quick. Yeah, <laughs> so it was like it happens, classic. Then. You know, it was all there, paint on the canvas yeah. in about half an hour. Yeah. How did you actually start? Because uh, you started this one yeah. and sent it over to me, uh, what you'd done. But what was the first thing that you started? How did the recording come together? What was the oh, yes. first things that you played and how did uh, you build it? Up uh, the, the drum ground? machine just taking care of a basic pulse. Um, Which drum machine? Sorry, I'm just curious. Uh, Bentley Rhythm Ace. Because I don't think I've, uh, I have received the No, I didn't, I didn't give you the drum machine, but that's what... Oh, so, so it was Bentley Rhythm Ace, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then it was, um, even though it was written on guitar, it was the Rhodes for the whole thing, because you hear that in the verse. Uh, and I knew that was going to be the verse and the chorus bed. So that was it. Rhodes, voice, essentially. And then it was just... The way I lay drums down is I try to play in time for at least four bars or eight bars without fucking it up. Can be a challenge. And then just loop those eight bars and that was fine for this because it's just like, it's, you know, kind yeah, of yeah. but I knew that Sean would just get on it and just, yeah. you know, plow down. Like a farmer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a drum farmer. Like the, yeah, I spent a while doing the, the bass, trying to really get it in the pocket. Was the bass the, the upper phone bass? Uh, it was a bit of both actually. Oh, there's two different bases on there. Yeah, I think I think it was. Controversial. Anyway. That was hard, man. I spent ages just trying to get that bass right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, take yeah. after take after take. It's got to be so tight, that kind of thing. But the thing I really enjoyed doing was putting down that chorusy kind of guitar on the on the chorus, which gives it that British kind of. Yeah, yeah that was interesting. It's a very sort of uh, lots of delay, stereo kind of. It, well, I like from a uh, different world. Yeah. You know, like you were you were mentioning. Um, Prefab Sprout. Prefab Sprout. Yeah, which I wasn't that familiar with. I'm being, if I'm being honest, and I, I, you mentioned that you mentioned them to me, and I sort of mm. listened to some of the records, and I was shocked I, I, yeah. how interesting they were. Oh yeah, they're they're really the, interesting. The yeah. first and the second albums are just miraculous. Yeah, they're brilliant. They're, yeah. There's so much depth, and it's yeah. yeah, it's really interesting. So there's a bit of that there, a kind of bit of the chimey tears for fearsy thing as well in there, but. Uh, that's what I think just sets it apart and makes it a new thing rather than mm. just a rerun of something that you yeah yeah you know you know we've established what we're doing now that whatever we're doing is it should sound like us anyway if you know what I mean yeah and I, I felt like when this tune was done that it, uh, it was obvious to me it was a single yeah you know and I felt like uh, and, and even now I mean it hasn't came out yet but I felt like this this is a single that a lot of people will like mm. I feel like it, ha it has like a a very broad mass appeal mm. this tune so we'll see we discussed earlier that you don't know what people like sometimes you think you know we think this tune's gonna everybody's gonna be like, oh, this tune's brilliant and they may be like oh it's cool but you know i'll prefer that one you know but yeah, once you've done this out in the world living having its own life 
Yeah, it's out of your control, man. You just you don't know. know really. Yeah, you just got to do something you like. But it. it's you know, it does have that. Feels like it could have that appeal, but it's interesting enough in its own right. It's still musically quite sophisticated, you know. Mm. Like, yeah. The thing we've said about Steely Dan in the past about having these radio hits and big selling tunes, but they're they're really interesting as well. That's yeah, like that's yeah, like peak, it's, yeah, totally. It's, peak gold, it's peak. It? Yeah, it is. It's like the sort of highest. Uh, Thing that you could achieve to have like a catchy single, but but also very music, you know, musically sophisticated and and just musical. So then you recorded your sort of like your, all your sounds. I think it was very basic. What I sent it was the the vocals, wow. like a drum loop, yeah. bass, and I think those um, electric guitars. Yeah, it was it was all the basic sort of like meat and potatoes were there. But yeah, you know, none of that acoustic guitar. I think my, that acoustic guitar in the in the reintro is one of my favorite parts. Yeah, we had discussed having more acoustic guitar on on the, on the latest you know new album and yeah. so i was like well this doesn't have any acoustic guitar this song and so i i felt like i need to i need to square peg it into a round hole mm. just to, to carry across the thread of that which you know in a way was was really quite a brilliant thing because i don't think i would have thought of that otherwise mm. it was because it was an agenda yeah and so it forced me to the to the guitar which was uh which was the Ovation guitar, which are, are really favoring for um, some of the kind of more solo lines because yeah. it has an interesting, the pickup is very interesting sounding. The tone, it has this sort of ambiguous tone between acoustic and electric, yeah. which I find quite distinctive. And uh, and the guitar doesn't have a lot of sustain either. So it's, it has a thing, you know, and it forces you into things. You stand up to record the Ovation. No. Otherwise it's like, <laughs> Well, then it would be a standing ovation. Hey! <laughs> He's here all week, yes. folks. Well, it just slips away. That's part of the fun of it. It's like, you know, I'm looking at the most attractive, just three different guitars. The ovation, the area, and... Oh, yes. The, the Nashville. I'm trying to play this thing uh, on your lap. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Turtle. You have to kind of play it like this, maybe, you know. Uh, Wow, I played the right notes. Whoa, I'm going to stop there. And it has a really dusty sound. It's very interesting. I mean, listen to the sustain on this. Oh. That's weird. That's a drill. No, but you're playing at the same note same as the note. drill. Yeah. Whee! Yeah. That was, that, that was incredible. It's a sign. It's that was <laughs> deep. <laughs> you join the dots between the answer line and the... Exactly. And the main melody. They're, they're completely different things, and then you fused it into this slightly tweaked version. It was there, I just had to unearth it. On acoustic, you know. so... Yeah, anyway. It's a mint moment in the tune. What do you want to listen to? Shall we start with the drums? It's usually a good idea. Yeah, a bit of drums, yeah. Oh. Maybe we should turn it up a little bit. Yeah? Oh. <laughs> That's free minds, basically. Big snare and tum. <laughs> That's the sexy bit there, though, Pete. Song, you wouldn't be expecting this tune, would you? 
kind of bringing a judgment position. There's also piano in that bit as well. Yeah. It's only in that bit. Oh, that sounds great. That's a Juno slide, isn't it? Juno 6. Juno 6. The best Juno. There's the acoustic guitars in the bridge. Was you got a, the Nashville? There's a Nashville and maybe a, is there a twelve? Oh, that thing like a ring. Yeah, it's like it's a omnicord job. Really yeah, things, yeah. It, and then there's the also the ovation guitar that we spoke about earlier. Oh, yeah. oh. Yeah. nice spiel. Oh. Man, that's lovely. Yeah. Is the ovation in? Okay. That's it, that's just so Love this bit. Yeah, okay. that's such a lovely, that descending bit of the line, it's so yeah. nice. Stuff like it just naturally delivers you for the, for the yeah, second, yeah. second verse. Yeah, yeah. On a technical note, the acoustic guitars have a lot of uh, uh, like exciter on it. Oh, okay. Like which apex. Is, with no, um, What's your exciter of choice on this particular? Well, thing? actually, I've, recre <laughs> I've recreated the Dolby A trick. Ah, the old Dolby oh, yeah. nice. With a free uh, dynamic EQ called Nova. Because actually, all it is is like a, a 2 to 1 ratio multi band compressor. Compressing a lot in parallel. Let's whip out. It's more woody, okay? And then with more sparkly. It's more fairy dust, yeah. yeah. I love that, man. I forgot about that bit. But just on the first phase of the chorus, it yeah, just yeah. makes it bang. I like the, har the, the harmony that the guitars play there. It's quite, yeah. quite cool. You know, when I had all your stuff and I had to like put my stuff into it, mm. and so you have to find your space. Yeah. And you have to add, and I was looking to add acoustic guitars, and so it forces you into like a corner. This is my space. I have to create something mm. in this, you know, in this little thing that I have. Mm. And you come up with something that's very functional, mm. but you know maybe you know, something completely different because you know it, it's not wide open space. So yes, the vocals. Yeah. Shall we just listen to the BBs first, quickly? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you can hear, really hear all the chord changes in the in the, in the yeah, yeah, yeah. which I yeah. really worked on to, yeah, yeah. to get that kind of gospel uh, movement to it. It's very beautiful. Yeah, but yeah. it helps to put spring reverb on it as well because if I had put like something really posh, hmm. I don't know, it, it's not the same. Yeah. Like a lot of mid range and really cutting. Hmm. Recording tip number twenty-seven: make it sound worse to make it sound better. <laughs> That's yeah. But those backing vocals, I've always done that with all of my backing vocals. That f, yeah, I was I'm that. never going ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always fuh. and that's that's a Marvin Marvin thing. Who I just noticed who that got it in from solo. Harvey Harvey Fuqua, yeah, right. that kind of vocal technique to give to give it an entrance rather yeah. than just being a ooh. Or, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He it, was a real mother Fuqua. <laughs> he's a total mother Fuqua. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of magic, isn't it? No, nah, it's, so, it's lovely. It's so pretty, that section. Yeah. Stop, is that? Yeah, yeah no, it's, there as well is uh, uh, between the verse and the pre chorus, there's mm -hmm. just a little cheeky bar of two. 
which makes that whole thing kick in. Yeah, that, that was it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I told It's like I'm waiting around. Why am I waiting around? Let's just, let's just get, let's get there sooner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a length of a phrase. Yeah. The phrase ends not thinking about, oh, this is a half bar or an extra beat. Yeah. Or one less beat. It just feels right. You know, it has a flow. You know? I mean, that's why but back right was just so that's amazing. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> because was... everything is constructed yeah. around what this phrase wants to do. Yeah. Yeah. Something big, that outro bit has the extra beat. Dun, two, three, four, yeah. five. Da, da, yeah. da, 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 yeah. da, da. So great, that bit. Bert. What's up, Bert? <laughs> Bert. Hey, Bert. Ernie wasn't bad either, and Bernie doesn't get enough credit, I think. <laughs> yeah. I think Bert Backway takes all the credit from Ernie. Free Ernie, that's what I say. 